A uh, resident of Toflopo, a uh, sword mining community in the Ada West district of the Greater Accra region, are demanding a swift investigation into the death of a 47 year old father of three, Kolete Womeno, who allegedly died in a clash between residents of Toflopo and staff of Electrochem Ghana Limited on Monday, November 6, 2023. Three days after his demise, it is imagined that the deceased was not part of those who allegedly clashed with staff of Electrochem as the family demand probe into his death. Carlos Caloni has the rest of the story. <laughs> This was the mood in the family house of the deceased, Kolete Womeno, who allegedly died in a clash between residents of Tuflopo and staff of Electrochem on November 6, 2023, over sought mining concession. With tears rolling down their cheeks, a family spokesperson, Faustina Mamle Womeno, says they demand justice. Last Monday, we were home. When we heard that letter come, they came and attacked our workers. I was with my brother. I was even preparing something for us to eat. And my brother said, oh, what is happening? We need a defense. So he was just going through. He was going through from Salom to Lolonya. And he, during here, on his way going, he wanted to see what is happening. In fact, my brother don't have even a, 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 a part of a portion of the song to do the work. He is a farmer, a complete farmer. He even do farming during dry season. He was just passing. He is not part of those people who are working over there. And before we heard the news, they shot our brother. And he was lying down in the cold blood, left behind three children with a mother and a father. They are old, very old, above 80 years. And we are the sister, the family. This is the family. I am a sister. Who is going to take care of us? Nana Kufuado. In fact, we are looking on to you. Apart from the disease, these men also say they suffered varying degrees of injuries resulting from gunshot and cutlass attacks on them. Nikumene wali amichu, wali abie, neji langa ni ne awo uniform ke police wanga lejon le truka aba tutu awo nga lejon anu kwale ne aba wa roba ne wa ngmo ne wa wa jiongo nga no aba boni roba me wumi. Long early Jomi woman be on me while dancing, be me name while now we know what's why. A Beno Mayo, I hear Clanty in your new Kedadine in younger company. I your road le Ako Le I your dicker from woman be on me while no. I got two of Yakawa, Kati will let two upon Ekoba woo ye 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 question here. Let a Jacob ye 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 say Yokiko, ye ye question ye say Yokiko, ye coni yoning ye no two to echo in New York, let who a Jacob. With wailing and tears, women of the community, including wives of these victims, say they now live in fear. <laughs> Speaking to join News, the public relations officer of the Adan Songo Lagoon Association, Ibrahim Ahuma Tete, says the government must find the killers within 14 days. Our demand is we are giving the president and the government, we gave them two good ways, 14 days, that our brother that have been killed, they should prove it and let us see the killers. Those who kill our brother, we must, we want to know them. We want to know those who kill our brother, Kolete. And we want Letrochem Ghana Limited to only remain as Songo Sot. Aside that, aside that, whatever he would do, we are not going to agree. Yeah. Our only survivor is the Songo Lagoon. Yeah. So we are saying that from two weeks, two weeks exactly, if the president and the government they were not able to do anything to solve this situation. Then it would be that all of us in Ada along the Songo Lagoon, when they whip us all of us off by killing with guns and whatever, the Lagoon will be free for them to take over because we are not going to agree. And so this is the feeling among residents, among family members here, qualities family members here in Salom, in the Ada West District of the Greater Accra region. Reporting from Salome, my name is Carlos Caloni for Joy.
away from that tempest flare in Parliament as NDC and MP, uh, MPP MPs fight each other over government's response to the devastating flooding caused by the spillage of the Kosovo Dam. Microphones from both sides were on and you could barely hear anyone on the floor. More from that controversy shortly. First, listen to Energy Minister Matthew Poko Prempe, who led senior management of VRA to brief MPs on a spillage. The minister rejected claims that VRA mishandled the situation, arguing enough sensitization was carried out and there would have been serious damage to the Akosombo Dam if the spillage was not carried out. Full evacuation of close to 39,000 persons with no single, Mr. Speaker, with no single injury or death reported. The coordinated efforts also led to the preservation of the Akosombo Dam the Sodakope Bridge and the lives of many Ghanaians living south of the Akosombo Dam. We want to reassure them of our commitment. We are in this together and we will exhaust all the resources necessary to ensure that all of them are comfortably restored to their normal lives. We are in controlled split of excess water from Akosombo and pond downs between 15th September and 30th October was a necessary safety measure to prevent a highly possible dam break disaster. Spilling, Mr. Speaker, was the only option. And based on the available information and data, the spill levels were what was required to ensure the safety of the dam and prevent a greater impact, not only on the communities downstream, but on the entire country. I extend my gratitude to each member of parliament, civil society organizations, humanitarian organizations, religious and faith-based organizations, families of the displaced people and the entire nation for their unwavering support. And I pledge that together we shall overcome these challenges and emerge as a stronger nation. But the minority rejected the claims. According to minority spokesperson on mines and energy, John Jinapo, the conduct of the VRA as, uh, it was very irresponsible. Hey, the minister is in parliament briefing MPs on the aftermath of the spillage. The first question you ask is that couldn't you have engaged these MPs before the spillage? This is serious. This is cardinal. At least when the MPs move to their communities and they speak to their people, some of them will listen. That should be a, a simple issue. And then you went there and did a simulation. I never heard of any simulation in my area. I never heard of any simulation. And I never witnessed any simulation. In any case, when you knew you were going to spill the dam, did you create safe havens for them? Which towns were those safe havens created? Because what you do is that once you are going to spill a dam, you create a safe haven so that when people are affected, they can move to those areas. MPs have had to allocate schools, schools for people to go and stay there. Mr. Speaker, this is a serious issue, but even more important, is the issue of this perennial flooding. On the 19th of November, 2019, President Akufuado cut the sword for the construction of the Pualugu Dam, valued at about $1 billion. We were told that that would be the main solution on the white voter in terms of flooding. Mr. Speaker, when he cut the sword, he promised that in about four years, that project will be completed. At the end of this year, the four years will be due. I have been there, Mr. Speaker. No activity is taking place. Uh, the majority side disagreed. Now, according to MP for Tama West, Carlos Ahinkra, no one can fault the voter of authority for the role it played in the spillage of the dam. VRA hadn't taken the decision they took to get us where we are now. And that dam broke, Mr. Speaker, from... Akosobo to Tema was going to be submerged in the water. The speaker. It is, it is even, even beyond that, the speaker, I, 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 I will repeat that my colleagues or my fathers and, and mothers and, and, and sisters in the areas affected have taken a very big sacrifice. In fact, a, 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 a involunt, an involuntary sacrifice, a sacrifice they did not wish to, as it were, enter into. But they have saved some of us living downstream or living, you know, below the uh, 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 riverbed. The speaker, they have, they have, or we have, let me say we have, blindly 
overlook what VRA has actually gone through. I don't think the chief executive and his management even do sleep. Because they started this exercise by going to educate people who live in these areas. When they realized that the water level was going up, they didn't start this exercise yesterday. This exercise started way back. Warning people, telling them what will happen, and so on and so forth. They also started a spillage small, 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 little by little. They started releasing this water in such a way that it wasn't supposed to have, you know, cause this havoc or this mayhem that we are seeing today. But unfortunately, they don't control the rains. They do not have the opportunity to determine how much rains fall into the basin at any particular time. Now, the Electoral Commission has submitted a request to Parliament to withdraw a constitutional instrument, CI, laid in Parliament last week. Now, the CI seeks to create a new Gone constituency for the SAL areas, which currently do not have representation in the 8th Parliament. According to Majority Leader of Sir Chairman Zabunso, the EC's request is due to their fear that the CI may not mature in time, thereby delaying the upcoming district level election. He submitted a request to withdraw it. And um, the very day of reconvening, um, they have submitted it for presentation, and concurrent to it, they have submitted another one for its withdrawal. My own position was that um, if they had spoken to me earlier, um, the second request would not have been necessary. Because if there's nothing before us at the time, you cannot put something on nothing. Um, so the request to withdraw something that had not been laid was, was not even necessary. However, the speaker's attitude was that um, people had misconstrued what was happening in Parliament. They thought that instrument had come to Parliament and Parliament was sitting on it, the creation of um, that other constituency. So the speaker took the attitude that we should um, have it presented to Parliament and they could come later to withdraw it. Um, so we submitted the withdrawal and we had agreed to withdraw it um, even in my absence or to withdraw it whenever I came to Parliament because the previous week I had excused myself. And the reason for the withdrawal was simple, that um, if you created it, the constituency, you then needed to hold the TLA, the district level elections, to conform to the creation of the constituency. However, there was not going to be any, any uh, constituency at that time. And then, of course, it was also going to delay the conduct of the district level elections. Because the moment that set in, it would then cause them to hold on the conduct of the district level elections in that constituency, if you like, the new district to be created. So that was the reason why they have submitted the, um, the, the case for the withdrawal. However, minority leader Dr. Casey Latoforsen says that may not be necessary and has advised the EC to keep the CI in Parliament. And actually hold the district level election for one constituency after you have actually um, gone through the processes of electing assembly members for the other constituencies. So on that basis, um, the Electoral Commission has no grounds to withdraw the uh, CI. And um, let me put it this way, between the uh, Subsidiary Legislation Committee members and the Electoral Commission, there has been an agreement that the CI will no longer be withdrawn. Because if the basis for the withdrawal has to do with the conduct of the district level election alone, then another date can be set for them two or three weeks after. And if it will mean that Parliament will have to sit some extra days, then we may have to have that conversation. So between us as leaders, we are having that conversation. That is why I asked him as soon as I sat down as to whether he had an engagement with the, district, uh, the electoral commissioner. 
and I hope this matter, as to whether they will draw it or not, will be resolved peacefully, I mean, today, tomorrow, so that the people of Sao will have their own constituency. I still on electoral reforms. The majority leader of Sao Chairman Sabonso has voiced his concerns regarding the Electoral Commission's proposal to make the Ghana card the exclusive document for voter registration ahead of the 2024 elections. Jose J. Minzabonsu pointed to the ongoing challenges in the issuance of Ghana cards by the National Identification Authority as a reason to exercise caution in relying solely on the Ghana card for voter registration. I think we, the House agreed that they should use the Ghana card. But it's conditional. The position we took was that so many people don't have the Ghana card. And some of the people who had even registered to acquire the card had not been given their cards. And given the pendency then of the district level elections, to have really tied the registration to Ghana card, knowing, as they did know, that some of the eligible Ghanaians had not been able to register to acquire the cards. And some who had registered had not been said with the cards. To say that you were restricting, uh, restricting it solely to the Ghana card was going to be problematic. So if they can assure, together with the identification authority, if they can assure that every qualified or every eligible Ghanaian will be provided with the Ghana card, then you can bring the, you can bring the uh, instrument Presidential candidate of Movement for Change, Alan Tremantin, says partisan leadership has been the bane of Ghana's socio-economic development. Addressing a sea of people clad in yellow, Mr. Tremantin said leadership provided by the major political parties in the country have not delivered on the dreams and aspirations of Ghanaians. He believed the current economic hardship in the country can only, only be salvaged if Ghanaians shift from partisanship leadership to transformative leadership. Speaking to Joe News at the Greater Accra Movement for Change Volunteer Activation, Mr. Chumantin pledged to be the transmitted leader the country badly needs. It is clear that the majority of Ghanaians are looking beyond the NDC and MPP. Because between the two dominant parties, they've had an opportunity for over 30 years to roll out policies and programs that can bring transformation to the people of our country. It is clear that in spite of all the efforts of these two dominant parties, Ghana is still unable to move beyond where we've been over these couple of decades. So they are looking for change. They are looking for transformation. And the movement for change is seeking now to provide an opportunity for Ghanaians to go beyond the dominant, the two dominant parties. Mr. Chumantin further noted that positive behavior and attitude will be strong pillars of his government if elected president. According to the former Minister for Trade and Industry, his transformative leadership alone won't be enough, hence the need to enforce discipline and positive attitude not change among the population. He says such a situation will enhance the rule of law and deal with the menace of corruption in the country. Last pillar is to inspire a behavioral change, an attitudinal change of Ghanaians. Because obviously it's not just enough to bring in a new transformational leader. You need the people of Ghana also to be more disciplined, to allow laws to work in Ghana, also to deal substantively with the issue of corruption and many others. 
So this basically is the foundation for the movement. But it's also based on the principle of a youth-led and poet movement. Because we all know that the youth are the future of our country. Now, the Asante Hene Otu Force to the second has voiced his distress over the lack of progress in the fight against illegal mining, often referred to as Galamse, citing persistent threat to life and political maligning of persons advocating against the menace. The Asante Hene is saddened at the intensified activities of illegal miners. He made a comment when a team from the Kumasi unit of the multimedia group paid a ketsi call at the Mensha Palace to present Loris and by Erastos Asaridonko on his consistent reports on illegal mining. Galamse has destroyed all our lands. This is influencing majority of emerging diseases in babies from long exposure to mercury in our water bodies. Yet, complaints do not get any attention. It's hurtful. I couldn't watch Erastus' documentary. I was overwhelmed with sadness. We have sold arable cocoa lands for illegal activities. The new trend is gunmen threats on people who try to access these illegal sites. The whole country's security machinery didn't fight this. Reclamation of the land I have already arranged for reclamation of degraded lands, yet these areas have become danger zones and inaccessible. All these chiefs look on and accept their share of the illegality, so they won't even report. Soldiers are receiving unknown calls to seize military actions in these places. Who are those people behind the calls? Yeah, now, some electorate in Kumasi say they refused to participate in the voter exhibition exercise because they will not vote next year. Despite being a civic responsibility, they argued their vote had not brought them the good fortunes they hoped for. Meanwhile, some electorate are prevailing on the Electoral Commission for a date extension of the exercise which ended Tuesday across the country. Take a listen to some electorates from the Swami constituency. Eja, ye be ECBA register say yen koni yen koshe ye din se ya capture. Unya kwain timi koshe odi. Dive in patch of mango he. I didn't see ya. Men trouble ni bim. I did not check my details because I will not be voting again. I see no benefits from the elections. I won't even bother to check. Minya kwain kwain timi tu. Men frigan ha kwain ko. Timi pa se me se me confirm ko kumi tia trouble ni. Enye ye bim tu bim. I've lost interest with regards to politics. You know, we are facing so much as a country and the hardship is unbearable. So, okay. so that's why I didn't go. Yes. But here lies the case, it's your civic responsibility to actually vote um, for the next leader, if you really want change. Yes, I know. <laughs> but as you know already, you're a citizen, I'm a citizen, let's face the facts. <laughs> and um, with the current economic situation of the country, 
honestly, I won't bother myself, join the queue, and cast my vote. Because I've seen no change. It's been a long time. It was almost a beer to me because it be another time no beer to cry. EC must extend the date. People might not have been around when the exercise was conducted. I cannot afford to pay money to just check my name using the short code, she says. Because I haven't done that because I'm not at my constituency. I'm from Upper East. Okay. Um, okay. But um, there's a short code. Um, actually, the date has ended, but there's a short code where you can um, check your details, but it comes with a cost. Um, are you willing to do that? If only it's reliable, so that when you take it, it will not be a bounce back. Maybe you are trying and there's no network this way, this way you can't check it. When it's like that, it's frustrating. But if it's a straightforward one, why not? I will do it. The location is too low. That's what I've seen. You know, I did it twice. I use a sort code. There's a sort code uh, that was what I used for the first time, and I walk personally to the center and I do the check as well. If it has ended, then I cannot check my details, but I know my name has been captured. I did not know they were conducting the exercise. That's why I did not go and check. Besides, I'm not willing to vote. I have checked mine. My details were captured, but they should extend the deadline. I've decided to vote next year to change the government. That's why I went to check my details. Welcome back from the break. Now, many criminal cases are on hold in the Upper West region because jurors are demanding payment of allowances. This is the second time in three months that jurors have stayed away from the courts because the government has not paid their certain allowances. The action by the jurors halted court proceedings uh, as all in the, in the, uh, indictable cases scheduled for today have been adjourned to December. The foreman of the jurors, Abdul Hakim Suleiman, told Joe News that they will sit on any case until they are paid. Now, Joe News, Upper West Regional Correspondent, Rafiq Salam reports from Boa. Unlike in July, when the jurors walked out of a live court proceedings, they stayed outside the court premises today and refused to take part in the proceedings. The jurors, for two years, hasn't been paid their certain allowances. In July, somewhere in July, we came to the premises of the court to register our displeasure for the court authorities not paying us our allowances from November 2021 up to date. So we are following up on the payment of the allowances to that effect. We are also reliably informed that the Greater Accra uh, branch of the jury members petitioned again, made their cry once again, and at length they were paid. I don't want to sound as if it is discrimination against the Upper West region, but it is apparent that you can see it. All the other regions have been paid, two, three, or six months, but nothing for the Upper West Region. Abdul Hakim warned that they will not take part in court proceedings unless they are paid their allowances. As a, a foreman of the jury members, I promise that immediately a signal comes. I will make sure that even if going to the jury members one by one, I will do that to ensure that they all appear to the citizens. So for now, you will take part in court activities? How can we sit and then those come from far away communities? Their TNT, how do they come? For two years now. If, because we are not there, I can't talk of the sitting allowance, but the TNT, the traveling allowances, are cheap at least, that should be paid. The action taken by the jurors, who numbers over 25 in the region, granted proceedings of the Wahai High Court to a halt, forcing the judge to adjourn the indictable cases, principal state attorney at the Attorney General's Department, lawyer Said Abu Shakur, 
is deeply worried about the irregular attendance of the court by the jurors. For the whole of last year, we could not complete any criminal case that is tried on indictment. The jurors are on strike. All the murder cases that have piled up here, all the rape cases are here. We are in court, but we cannot try. We can't try without the jurors. So we are passionately appealing to whoever is responsible for payment of allowance to do that immediately so that we can come back. He said, oftentimes, the blame is rather parried to them for deliberately delaying their trials. So many persons who do not know how the system works are angry. Are angry. People are complaining. Some people are even suggesting that the cases, we are deliberately not trying the cases because uh, they, they have seen that in other areas we have been able to secure conviction. But if we talk, bring up a defilement case, that's not tracked, that's a summary trial. We will go to second court immediately or come to high court and then the judge will determine it as quickly as possible. But these cases that require jurors, we can't just do anything. Another is the Director of Legal Aid Commission in the Upper West Region, Chris Benziaka, much as he appealed to the government for the payment of the certain allowances of the jurors, he will want the latter to rescind a decision and come to court for the trials. This all goes into the perception that the courts do not serve justice, which is not good enough for our democratic credentials, which most people in Africa look up to. So I pray that the jurors also consider and then come back to their duty. We work with them and they are essential to this whole process. Meanwhile, officials at the Upper West Office of the Judicial Service of Ghana has told me off camera that they are making frantic efforts to ensure that the jurors are paid soon. Reporting for Dwe News, Rafik Salam. Wa. Let's speak to the Ghana Bar Association on this development. Xavier Kuja speaks for the association. He joins us on phone now. Grateful to you for joining us. Now, many cases are on hold because jurors say they are, they've not been paid and therefore they won't come to work. How concerned is the GBE on this? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, good evening. And good evening to your viewers and listeners. We are very much concerned because uh, this appears to be a peculiar, a peculiar case. Why do I say this? In July this year, I granted an interview on this same subject, appealing to the powers that be to see to it that they are paid, because according to them, everybody else has been paid except them. So during that interview in July, I made a point that we were even lucky that it was running into the vacation, so they would use that opportunity to sit down with them. If, if they are not even able to pay them, they should be able to arrange make reasonable arrangements for payment. So, so it's a serious thing because it affects lawyers' work. Not only that they won't have any, but there's a postponed workload for every lawyer who is involved in such cases. Okay. And also, the accused persons themselves to have their rights not being propagated for. Because the earlier the matters are dealt with, the better it is for them by way of knowing their fate as to whether they'll be guilty or otherwise. Okay. Is there anything that GB intends to do to support their case? Well, I think what we can do is to, to speak to the powers that be, because uh, as I said, this came to attention in July, and we made uh, frantic efforts and also appealed to them, but uh, it's a surprise to us that it's happening as of today too, so we'll make uh, the necessary arrangements to see the powers that they be so that we see what they can do, because they are reasonable people, so once reasonable arrangements are made for their payment, uh, payment of these allowances or part of it, I am sure they will get to it, yeah, just as they are uh, four months said that they are ready any time he gets a signal he will let his colleagues come to work together with him. all right grateful to you Sela Kujie, for speaking to us here Thanks. now still with the court state prosecutors have withdrawn charges against the seven individuals accused of allegedly stealing monies and valuable items worth millions of ghana cities from the matrimonial home of former sanitation minister cecilia abnadapa but their freedom was short-lived the police promptly re-arrested them and slapped them with the same charges. Richard Kwajonyako of our Legal Affairs Desk reports. The seven accused, namely Patience Bochi, Sarah J, Benjamin Sowa, Malik Dauda, Christiana Chab, 
Job Pomeri and Yahaya Sumaila were acquitted by the circuit court where they were facing charges related to conspiracy, theft, dishonestly receiving and money laundering. State prosecutors led by Assistant State Attorney Akosue Japoma Ajiman, in accordance with Section 59 of the Criminal Code, withdrew the charges. Shortly after they were released, they were re-arrested and same charges were preferred against the seven at the High Court in Accra. The case now moves from the Circuit Court to the High Court. In a related development, a new judge is likely to be assigned by the Chief Justice to preside over the application for confirmation of seizure and freezing of the property of former Sanitation Minister Cecilia Abnadapa. The development has arisen because the judge who has been presiding over the case, Justice Edward Chum, is scheduled to start his vacation. The High Court judge had a warrant from the Chief Justice to sit during the legal vacation and is now due for his annual leave. The Office of the Special Prosecutor froze the bank account of Madame Cecilia Dapa and seized some cash sums from the matrimonial home of the former minister weeks ago. But the court is yet to confirm the seizure and freezing of the property. On Wednesday, when the case was called, the judge, Justice Ejo Chum, invited the two parties to his chambers. After some 30 minutes of deliberation, the parties came back and indicated that the judge is scheduled to start his leave and the case has been adjourned to the 29th of November. The OSP had earlier written to the Chief Justice for the judge, Justice Ejo Chum, to recuse himself from all eight cases, a petition that was not granted by the Chief Justice. The petition by the OSP caused some adjournment of the substantive application as the parties waited for a response from the Chief Justice. Madam Cecilia Dapa, through her lawyers, complained about how the delays were causing some incalculable financial hardship to the former minister. She accused the OSP of deliberately orchestrating the delay, something she described as an affront to her right to enjoy her properties. Reporting for Joy News from the court complex, Richard Kwejo